What I'm going to do now is take you through the process of building a dashboard with SAP Business One version for HANA and SAP Business One Analytics powered by HANA. We have a new feature called Pervasive Analytics. And what Pervasive Analytics is about is making it very simple and very easy for you to build your own dashboards. I'm going to give you two ways of doing that. The first way is by building a query and then basing your new dashboard on that query. And the second way is by using our new semantic layer and taking one of the semantic layers and building a dashboard based on that. So let's go through the process, first of all, of building our query. So in SAP Business One, as you know, to build a query, you simply go up here onto Tools, you go here into Queries, and you go to the Query Generator. I like to use the Query Generator, even though there is a Query Wizard as well that's available that will walk you through the process step by step. But once you're familiar with all the different tables in SAP Business One, it makes it much easier to use the Query Generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a dashboard, which is just going to be a very, very simple example. I'm going to show us uh, customers, account balances, and also order balances. We're also going to want to be able to look at that information on the basis of the territory, the country, and the salesperson. So we want to be able to use the measure, two measures being order balance and account balance, and then those other values, salesperson, country, uh, business partner, they will be our dimensions. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my main table. And my main table here is the OCRD table. I'm going to explain to you in a minute exactly how you find out which tables you need to use. But just for now, work with me. I'm going to select my OCRD table. And now I'm going to select the fields that I want. So I want the business partner name. I also want the business partner type. And I just, do, I just select these by double clicking on the field. Then as I scroll down, you can see I've got the account balance. Then I'll go a little bit further down and I have the open order balance. So I'll just double click on that. I also, let's say I'll grab my credit limit and then I want to find the salesperson code. Now I can scroll through all of these and these are pre-structured in a certain order according to the way that we have built the query tools, but you can go in here and you can double click on the description header or you can double click on the name and then it will sort according to either the field name or the description. So I'm going to sort on the basis of the description again by double clicking there and now I can scroll down to the S's and you'll see I actually have a sales employee code. So when I choose the sales employee code that adds that in there. Now, I want to double check that that's the information that I want. In order to do that, I simply click on execute and now I can see the information. So there you have it, the business partner name, the business partner type, balance, open order balance, credit limit and the sales employee code. Couple of things you'll notice, business partner type is L and S. Well, L is a lead, S is a supplier, and C is a customer. So as I scroll down, you'll see here are all my customers. Now in this particular instance, I only want customers, okay? So what do I do? I can now hit cancel. It'll take me back to my query builder or my query generator. And then I can say, all right, I only wanna see, so I'm gonna apply a filter. I only wanna see the data where We'll go back up and we'll say where the card type. And it's simply a matter of scrolling through. Here we go, business partner type. So I double click and I say where card type and I can type in my uh, value where card type is equal to, and it's a string. So I put a single quote, C for customer and close the string. Now, I always like to make sure after I make every, if you like, change into my query, I just go ahead and click execute to run it to make sure it all worked correctly. 
So there we go. I click on execute. And yes, now I'm looking at the information I want. So now it's only showing me the values where uh, the card type is C for customer. All right, so that's great. So again, I'll click on cancel. That will take me back to my query generator. Now, I can pre-sort this information here in the query if I want. So I can click here on the sort by field and I can say sort by, let's say, business partner name. So I just double click. Again, I'll click on execute. And you'll now see it's being sorted on the basis of the business partner name in alphabetical order. So if I like all of that information, I'm happy with that. That's my base query. But there's one more thing I need to do. I might not know that the sales employee code number two is John or that sales employee code number four is Mary or whatever the case may be. So I want to bring in those people's names. But that comes from a different table. So again, this is where we're working with uh, relationships between tables. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to hit cancel. Now I know that that information about the salesperson's name comes from the salesperson table. So again, I simply click up here into my table selection. I hit tab. I'm going to double click on the description, makes it easy to find. And then I start typing sales and there it is, sales employee. So now I select that field and then I'm going to say, I want the sales employee name. So I simply double click on that and now I'll execute that field, that query again. And what do you see? There you go. Not only am I now seeing the sales employee code, but I'm now seeing the sales employee name as well. All right, great. Got everything I need. I now hit save. I'm going to give this a query and I'm going to call this customer info just for the sake of the exercise now you might end up with a lot of queries so in business one you have the capability to group your queries into categories so i'm going to click here and say manage categories and i'm going to add a category name so i'm going to call this customer queries and then what I'm able to do is I can set up authorization groups. This is how I control which person in the organization has access to these queries. But I'm just gonna say everybody in all my authorization groups has access. So I'll just say add and okay, and that's now done. So I select now this is going into my customer queries and my query name is customer info. And then I say, save and that's now done so that's the first step that's how i build my query now of course with sap business one i can just go and quickly execute that query anytime by going up here to queries and going to my query manager calling it up from there or i can go here into user queries and there you go there you can see that new category i've added customer queries and customer info one click and there's my query result so that's nice if I want a quick view of that information. But remember, I now want to visualize that into a dashboard. So I need to go into my dashboard builder. To do that, I click up here on tools. I click on dashboard designer. And now I'm going to have access to all these different queries. So here we have customer queries. And there it is, customer info. I select that. It runs the query, shows me the data. So I can make sure, yes, that's what I want. So I then say, okay. And now I want to design my dashboard. So the first thing I need to do is choose my measures. So what do I want to see in my dashboard? Well, let's say I want to see account balance. So I simply take my account balance and I drag it and drop it here into the region of the dashboard designer for my measures. So these are usually the numeric values. So there we go, account balance. That's in there. Now, what do I want to do with that account balance? So I want to show the sum, the average. In this case, I'm going to leave it as sum. And now I need to provide a dimension. So am I looking at account balance by employee name or account balance by business partner or customer name? Well, I want to look at it by business partner name. So I simply drag that down here. And now across here, what do you see? Automatically that. Uh, data is now visualized for me. 
but that's a little bit all over the place. Well, actually, it's sorted on the basis of the query, which is by customer name, but I might want that sorted on the basis of the sum of the account balance from largest to smallest. So all I need to do to do that is I simply go up here and I click, so I'm going from smallest to largest or from largest to smallest. So that's great. I've now got a really quick dashboard. I can go now and I can save that. To do that, I click here and I say save and I'll give it a dashboard name and my dashboard name here, I'm just gonna call it customer info and then I say okay and that's done. I'll now say finish. So that's my dashboard built and that's a very simple example. The next step is to publish that dashboard. So to do that, I'm gonna go up here under my cockpit. I've created a nice empty cockpit here. You'll see I've created a custom one called dashboards. So it's empty. I'm just gonna drag across my dashboard widget. And now I click here on settings and you'll see now in my list that I have my different dashboards and one of the dashboards I have is the one I just created, which is called customer info. I select that, I say okay, and there you have it. Now, you're thinking that looks different to what you saw before. Where's the, the vertical bars? Well, the only reason why the vertical bars aren't showing at the moment is because I haven't allowed enough information or enough space in my dashboard widget. I simply drag that down and you can see, now I can see that information. That's a little bit too big. Okay, I can make it narrower and all that's gonna do is automatically shrink down the width of the dash, uh, the width of the bars. So again, I just drag that across there and there you can see there's the information. So that's my first dashboard. That's a quick look at how I do it. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can add additional dashboards and how you can build a new dashboard based on the existing one.